Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to learn about using before update and after update together. I got separate videos on before update and on after update, but this example is going to show you a good combination of how they work together. Today's question comes from Bryce in Mesa, Arizona, one of my Platinum members. Bryce says, I have a form where I schedule appointments and I only book them on the hour, like 10 a.m. or 3 p.m. Is there an easy way to check if I already have something scheduled at that time so I don't double book? Also, after I enter the appointment, can Access prompt me to send a confirmation email? I keep forgetting to do that and it would really help if the system reminded me automatically. First of all, it's good that you only have appointments on the hour because if you had all a bunch of different times, it'd be weird to have to try to check for, it'd be more difficult to have to try to check. If you got something like a 10.05, you'd have to then you'd have to put durations or appoint ending times. So as long as they're all hour long appointments on the hour, this will be easy to do. If not, I've got other alternatives. We'll talk about that later. And sending a confirmation email, Again, not that hard to do. This is a perfect example of a before update situation and an after update situation because before the field is updated, you gotta verify that it's a valid date, right? Check to make sure it's a correct date, first of all. Uh, the date range is, is valid. You know, they don't enter something from 1990, for example. And then you wanna check to see if that same date exists in the table or not. And you can give them an error and not allow them to save the update in the before update event, right? Then once you've done all that and you verify that it is a valid date, then you can do the after update stuff. For example, ask if you wanna send an email confirmation. So we're gonna do that in today's video. First off, this is a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, that means if you don't know VBA and you wanna learn VBA, and I strongly recommend you do because it's awesome, go watch this video first, about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. I recommend you go watch my separate videos on before update and after update so you understand the differences between them. Also, you should know DLOOKUP. We're gonna use this to see if there's already an appointment with the specified date in the table. We're gonna use the NZ function. In case there's not, it'll return a null, so we have to handle that. You should know how if then blocks work. And of course, you should know how to use a message box to get a yes or no response. These are all free videos, they're on my website, they're on my YouTube channel, go watch all of those, and then come on back. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help Free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to, but this will work with that pretty much any database you got. All right, so let's create a real quick appointment table. So table design, we've got appointment ID, that's our auto number, the appointment date and time, that'll be a date time field, a description, short text and notes, long text. And if you wanna put other stuff in here, like a customer ID who it's you know for, all that stuff, whatever you wanna put in here, that's fine. But that's not the point of this data or this video. We're just gonna keep it simple. All right, save this as my appointment T. And yes, I tend to abbreviate really long words like appointment. Prim uh, primary key, yes, there we go. Save it. All right, let's close it. Close it and we'll make a real quick form for it. You can make a single or a continuous form. I'll use a continuous form for this. So I'm gonna, I got uh, basic ones in here. Copy and paste that one. We'll call this my appointment F. I'm gonna open that guy up and right click design view. We're gonna bind this form to the appointment table. So go to data, record source, drop that down, pick appointment T. And I'm just going to get rid of these fields and bring in the ones right from here. All we need is date time and description. Actually, I like to bring them in. I like description first. I put the description there. Get rid of the label. I like to type in the description first. Maybe that's just the way I work, right? I like to put in here, okay, we're going, we got an appointment for whatever, and then we'll put the date and time in. That's just uh, that's how, how my brain works. Unless I'm putting it on a calendar, then you got to find the date on the calendar first. But when I'm usually setting up appointments and stuff with people, I'm like, okay, got to meet with Captain Picard. And then, okay, what time are we doing that? <laughs> um, and then, of course, our labels up top here. I like to just use one label sometimes, especially if it's simple like this. So we've got the appointment and then the date time, right? Okay, make sure your tab order is right. Tab order, description, appointment, date time, okay. Make sure everybody's left aligned. Okay, good. 
good because remember date times usually go to the right i hate that all right here's my brand new appointment uh form that points to my appointment table real quick and easy to set up all right we got a phaser inspection and that's going to be i'm going to hit control semicolon that puts today's date in there you can easily change it tomorrow if you want to and then a space and then 9 a.m all right, then we got a, uh, a photon torpedo inspection. Those of us in Starfleet just call them PTs, right? It's not physical training. <laughs> and then that's going to be at 10 a.m. And then the doc wants to see me down in sick bay. So he wants to see me at uh, 10 a.m. But, oh, wait a minute, I got a conflict. I, I, got, a, I got a photon torpedo inspection, so I got to tell the doctor I can't do it. All right, so this is where we need that before update event to check for those conflicts. All right, so right-click, design view, go to your appointment date time, get rid of that guy, and we're going to bring up its properties. Double-click on it, go to events, go to after or before update, before update, before updates first, dot, 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 that'll bring up my little code builder. All right, now we're going to need an ID because we're going to look up an appointment. Whoops, dim ID as long. We're going to look up an appointment, but I, whenever I do temporary lookups like this, sometimes I'll just call it ID. You can call it whatever you want. And then we're going to say, all right, so we're going to check for conflicts. And it works out great that we're only having appointments on the hour because if you had to look up like 10.05, then you got to do, you know, more uh, detailed appointment conflict resolution with the duration of the appointment or the end time. If you do want to get that complicated, I do have a more complicated series of videos where we build a, you know, a full-fledged appointment database with a start time and an end time and conflict resolution and all that. Check out this video for more. But today's video, we're keeping it simple. All right, so here we're just going to say ID equals NZ. NZ is in case D look up, throws a null back at us, right? What are we looking up? An appointment ID from the appointment T, where the appointment date time equals whatever the current date time is that the user just entered, right? But that's got to be inside of pound signs because it's a date time, right? The field is appointment date time like that. Okay, close the D lookup, return a zero if it's null. That's what NZ does for us, right? Now, if it finds another appointment in the table at that same date time, it's going to return an ID. So it'll return like a six or a five or a 32. Okay, so if we get a number, I'm going to say if ID is not zero, then we have a conflict. Okay, so I'm in a message box. There is a conflict and then we're gonna say cancel equals true that's gonna stick the user in that box they can't leave it unless they either hit escape and back out or they type in a different date right and then we're gonna exit sub and end if and that's it okay save it debug compile once in a while and yes I'm putting that on a t-shirt <laughs> all right close it close it and then open it. It's down here. We don't have a button for it yet. All right. Let's put in that sick bay appointment. And let's put in 10 a.m. There's a conflict. Can't do it. Can't leave. So you fix that conflict. All right. Fine. Tell the doctor 11. Okay. Uh, we got a transporter inspection. It's inspection day, isn't it? All right. Tomorrow at 9 a.m. Conflict. See, there's one right above it. Okay, all right. So that's that's got to be at noon, 12 p.m. Okay, see? And that's how you do basic before update conflict resolution if, if, your, hour, if, your, if your appointments are on the hour every hour. And of course, there's some other basic things you can throw in here too before you even get that far. You could say, um, I, I do this one all the time. If it's only a time, um, tell them they need a date. Here's a, here's a cool trick. If the appointment date time that they enter is less than one. If you type in, remember one is equal to one day. So if they type in just 9 a.m., that means they, they didn't put a date portion in, right? And then the value will be less than one. Then, and I'm just gonna copy all of this stuff like that and stick it there. And then we have a, uh, we have time only, right? We'll say, you only entered a time, please uh, add a date to, or whatever else you want to say. Okay, so we'll do that before we even get to the conflict resolution. Save it, debug compile once in a while, come back out here, 
And now if I come in here and say, you know, uh, what do we got? Uh, Tribble uh, Roast. <laughs> and I put in 10 a.m. You only entered a time. Please add a date too. Oh, okay. All right. So that's tomorrow at, oh, see, it left it at midnight at 6 p.m. Okay. And I don't mean we're actually roasting tribbles. You get it. They're gross. You got to shave all that hair off. And I mean, like a roast, like a comedy roast. What do you think? I'm not, a, I'm not some kind of a, a, only Klingons do, only Klingons eat tribbles. And they have to because they were all over the engine room. <laughs> Another one also that I like to throw in there. Let's again, copy all of this. Let's make sure it's a valid year, right? I do this a lot too. Um, check for valid year. All right, so we're going to say if the year of appointment date time is um, less than 2000 or the year of appointment date time is greater than 2100, then uh, invalid year. And we'll say something like uh, the year must be between 2000 and 2100. Why those dates? Well, I don't want to necessarily say before today's date because sometimes I back at appointments. Look, if I had an appointment last week, Wednesday with somebody, Maybe I'll put in last week's date and then, you know, I go back and fill this way. I have a full, you know, contact history and appointment history with all my clients. So you might want to allow them in the past, but not back too far. Like if you started the company in 2002, you wouldn't want to allow dates before that. So that's why I go back to 2000. And then why 2100? Well, it's far enough in the future where I won't be here. <laughs> so if I, I accidentally type in 2250, then, oh, okay. And you could change with whatever range of dates you want, right? So now if I come in here, and I put the, you know, going back to see mom in uh, November 5th, 1955. Wait, 1955. November 5th, 1955. Of course. All right. You get the point. So that's all the before update part of it. Well, what about the after update? Well, once we got a valid date in here, now we can do stuff that you might want to, like, Reminders are perfect for this. All right, after you got a valid date, you're gonna save the record, everything's good. Now we're gonna come up here and change before update to after update. That's a fast way to get to the other properties for the same field, all right? Appointment date time's over here, after update's over here. You can also, there's also a before and update for the entire record too. I got whole separate videos on that. But you can, I usually put something like this in the after update event for the record. So when you're done editing the record, but this works fine here too. And here we can just say, if message box, uh, would you like to send a confirmation email, right? And then I like VBS, no cancel. I like cancel too, because sometimes people get decision paralysis. If they get yes or no, and they're not sure, they go, uh, I don't know which one to click. Cancel gives them a quick and easy back, you know, back out of it. Plus VB question plus VB default button two. I want the default to be two, which is no, the second button. Comma, what's the title? Uh, confirmation email, right? And if that is anything but VB yes, then exit the sub. So if they enter no or cancel, it'll just won't do it. And I'm gonna put right here, send email here. Am I gonna do it right now? No, because I got several other videos on how to send emails. This is the one I recommend. I'll put a link down below, sending email with CDO. It sends it direct to their mail server. It doesn't require a send object or Microsoft Outlook because in the coming future, they're gonna be removing Outlook's ability to be automated with VBA. So this is what I recommend you do. But if you want the older, simpler version that uses send Outlook email, then you can, you can watch this one too. It'll both work. This one's just gonna be outdated soon. But this one is easier. But if you're currently using Outlook, you got a couple more years left still. So if you want to do it this way, that's fine too. But there you go. That's how you build a real quick, simple appointment form with some basic conflict resolution. All right? You could do it on the half hour or the hour or whatever. It doesn't matter. Even if you got 15 minute appointments, as long as it's not the exact same start time, that's what matters. But if you do like 20 minute appointments and you want to start one at 11.05, well, this won't catch that. But if you do like 15 minute appointments and they're always on the quarter hour, right? 11, 11, 15, 11, 30, 11, 45, then this will work just fine. While we're checking is that exact date. But again, in my appointment series, I'll show you how to do a little more robust conflict management.
But that's going to do it, folks. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.